Uh, we have been uh, working on this robot plat robotic platforms from about last two years and like so this was our first version. So this uh, was like configured as a universal uh, robotic platform. It has uh, this uh, front looking camera for image processing. Then there is a wireless transceiver for wireless communication and uh, and there is one position encoder also. And this is all, this was like a universal uh, design. This robot have uh, like you can have a any kind of processor card in between and uh, you can have a, any kind of control system. So this was like a universal robot but it was just a, like a prototype uh, phase. So this variant have particular have a FPJ board on top of it. Then we also have a Lego or 8051 boards. Then we designed this uh, second version. We call this as a CD bot. Uh, this robot is made from CD casing. It has a four infrared proximity sensors. These sensors are used for obstacle detection uh, without any physical physical contact. And then there are uh, four line sensors uh, which can like follow a white line which is on the ground for localization. This robot also used to have a shaft encoder and ultrasonic uh, distance meter for uh, obstacle detection. This robot was designed in a modular way like this card over here. It's a, originally it was designed with 8051 core and then we can replace with any kind of microcontroller. Then even sensor boards are also interchangeable. So you can have any sensor board, any control strategy and any uh, microcontroller family. So this was like a sort of a, like a rapid prototyping platform. Then last year we designed this robot. So we call, call this machine as a Firebird 1. This robot have seven line sensors. Then it is a two wheel differential drive configuration. It has an infrared wireless communication and it has a three infrared range finders. So these sensors give you distance in uh, precisely distance in millimeters from the obstacle. And uh, this robot actually we gave it in the kit format like this to our MTech students. And students actually, uh, I mean, this box carried all the mechanical parts, then electronic components, all the tools necessary. And uh, students actually assembled this robot and then uh, used Altos to uh, run these machines. So this was our like last year's experience. So we deployed this uh, 20 machines in our lab. Then uh, meanwhile we like, but the, the problem with this machine is like it's, it was quite expensive. It was like, a, like something like a 7,000 7, rupees. So then we again uh, like uh, went to a drawing table. We uh, then redesigned the whole concept. And then uh, over here like we have a sort of a universal machine which can like have a 360 degree sensor scan. It has a reconfigurable eight proximity sensors. For pick and place it has an electromagnet over here. And then there is a line sensors are also there. And but still it was not like uh, good enough for uh, mass production. So then we designed this machine. So we call this machine as a Firebird 2. So this is our current platform and uh, we are already deploying this in CD uh, in our remote centers and already our MTech students are using this machine. So this machine have uh, three white line sensors and then there are a uh, few bump sensors over here. It has a wireless communication and a uh, few range finding sensors and you can also have a wireless camera. And this is currently uh, used in uh, three courses in uh, at IIT Bombay. Um, one is our own embedded systems, second is sensor networks and third is mechatronics from mecha mechanical department. So this is another highly mobile edition of the same platform. So uh, these robot like basic uh, parts are like, uh, I mean it needs some intelligence like microcontrollers or uh, CPLDs or any other device. Then sensors, locomotion, power and communication. So this particular robot have Atmega 128 microcontroller. Now we chose uh, this microcontroller because this uh, like can be used in sensor networks also. I mean tiny OS uh, porting is available. So you can treat this robot as a mobile sensor network mode. And then this robot have a three uh, linear infrared range finders for uh, like distance, uh, distance from like it, it can like estimate distance in millimeters from obstacle. Then it has a three white line sensors for localization, the five bump sensors for bump protection. It has a two position encoder. So you can actually uh, identify uh, robots uh, like by, by what distance robot is uh, traveling or its velocity. You can run this machine in closed loop control also. Then it has a one light sensor. You can also measure battery voltage. It has a three optional infrared proximity sensors which are cheaper in nature. And uh, you can also have a servo mounted port. So you can have a 360 degree scan. 
then it has a one LCD buzzer went few LED indicators. The best part is it has a 2.4 gigahertz CDMA wireless transceiver. So using this uh, device at any given instant, you can have a 3000 machines talking with each other simultaneously. So that's the best part. So and so that that's what make it uh, ideal for uh, mobile sensor network and collaborative robotic research. Then uh, it has a onboard lithium ion uh, power pack. So we are actually using two mobile phone batteries. So by, while designing this machine, like we actually took extremely care that that this has to be very cheap, easy to maintain. So we chose just lithium ion batteries, and we also designed our own ultra fast uh, one hour lithium ion charger, which is usually used in mobile phones. So this is how uh, this robot looks like. This is a very modular architecture. So like uh, say tomorrow if uh, I want to use say uh, 8051 or PIC or maybe say ARM7. So I can just replace this uh, microcontroller and I can have a, any uh, board over here. So this is the main board and then this is the programmer come uh, position encoder board over here. And then on top of this microcontroller board I can have any sensor board. So uh, like I can actually uh, use any sensor that I want to use. And then over on this side, uh, you have a 2.4 gigahertz CDMA trans receiver. This bump switch sensors are fitted over here, five places. And this LCD is fitted over here. And battery act actually fits in between the LCD and this main board. So it's like a quite uh, modular design. And this is its infrared linear range finder. So it actually measures the physical angle between uh, transmitted and received beam and gives you distance estimation. So it, it gives you distance estimation irrespective of, uh, I mean, it is no longer dependent on surface surface reflectivity. It gives, it is actually triangulation based sensor. So this is how this sensor looks like. So it has a infrared transmitter and a CCD array. So on which uh, when light falls, it actually calculates and on what point the intensity is maximum. And using that, it gives you uh, distance estimation. Then uh, these are bump sensors and these bump sensors are not ordinary switches, they are switches with hysteresis. So they don't give you chattering response like when they bump into something. Then this is the light sensor and this is the placement of the light sensor at the bottom side and these are very directional sensors. So they don't get affected by any ambient light. And then it is powered by uh, two very low power DC motors. So because if we say that this is a mobile platform, it has to consume very little power so that like it will have a long battery life. And the motors have to be cheap. So we choose uh, motors which are used in uh, digital camera for uh, roll winding. And these are very small size motors and consumes more, not more than 20 milli amperes at any given instant. So this is the physical size of the motor. So this is our 50 paisa coin. And this is the motor. And this is very cheap. Like this is like a, something like a 110 rupees motor. And uh, we control this motor in a closed loop control. So you actually have a position encoder on top of it. So position encoder is like a disc which have a slots. And there is a transmitter and infrared transmitter and receiver. So when that slotted disc pass in between, you get pul square pulses. So using that you can actually uh, find out like how much that machine is moving. And uh, to control uh, robot's velocity, uh, we use pulse width modulation. So by like f at any given uh, frequency, by varying the pulse width, you can actually uh, control power given to the motor. So that way you can actually uh, control the speed. Like in this case, the duty cycle is small. So motor will run at slower speed. And over here, this duty cycle is very large. So motor will be like running quite fast. So this is a position encoder. Again, it's a photo film. So it's just a exposed photo film with this pattern. and here is a infrared transmitter and infrared receiver and through this it, it is doing a position encoding and this wheel is made from simple uh, foam so it's a, like a very low cost design so this is another view and this is its uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, cdma transmitter and uh, we also designed a in system programmer for this machine so you don't have to remove microcontroller for uh, programming. You can do just on the spot. Thank you. And just to add to what he said, uh, the idea or our evolution was to make it as compact as possible. Uh, 
and the design should be modular so that if someone wants to replace particular component and add his or her own component, it should be uh, easily uh, uh, doable. So that's the idea and we, uh, we are also trying to reduce the cost as much as possible. Uh, but as I said, I mean to sustain our operation and the labor cost and things like that. So it's coming around 15K. So the basic idea with this robot is to spread uh, robotics across engineering uh, uh, colleges. So that's why we, uh, we even have a sort of a spin off from our lab which takes care of uh, financial uh, things related to this uh, robot. So, if I mean any of the engineering colleges want, I mean they can, they can contact us. Uh, so, I mean if the order is bulk or something like that, even some sort of discount is available. So, that's uh, maybe we can uh, talk about it tomorrow when we give the pamphlet about the next robotics, right? Okay. So, what I will do in next uh, couple of uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes is, I will briefly uh, describe the activities, uh, embedded real time activities that are going on in our lab, uh, the research that we are doing uh, as part of the lab work. So basically we are into a couple of uh, vertical domains. One is automotive uh, embedded systems like providing a real time support uh, for designing uh, such embedded applications that go in uh, automobiles. And the other thing is sensor network uh, where we deal with localization or uh, 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 sensing some interesting event and then broadcasting it to base station. So that's one vertical and uh, other thing is uh, real time system as such. So we are the uh, Vibhuti over here is sort of uh, working on an interesting uh, RTOS project uh, where we are sort of uh, trying to design and build a kernel to support multiple RTOS on top of it. So we have sort of uh, requirement from a customer. So first I will uh, go through uh, the automotive embedded system uh, since I have a couple of uh, videos that uh, people have uh, worked on in the lab. Are you aware of adaptive cruise control system that, that's there in the uh, high end automobiles? Uh, as you rightly said, I mean uh, adaptive cruise control is one which sort of tries to maintain safe distance from your leading vehicle at any given point of time. So driver need not uh, keep on pressing accelerator or brake pedal continuously while driving on let's say less congested roads. Let's say he's driving on a national highways and you just want to bit a sort of uh, relax, then he can just set what safe speed he wants his car to maintain from his leading vehicle. So that embedded system will take care uh, automatically for him. So this basically uh, enhanced version of cruise control. So there are some couple of interesting uh, real time issues here at what rate you need to sample your own velocity and then at what rate you need to sample the leading uh, vehicle velocity and then at what distance it is and then at what rate your task should uh, periodically compute and uh, take decision and then actuate the uh, electronic and uh, brake uh, control. So this is all uh, robots and all uh, even the software part is uh, done in our lab uh, by MTech students. Ashish is also working on this. So this is just a simple uh, cruise control operation that the video is demonstrating. Uh, cruise control is nothing but you can set your vehicle to always maintain a uh, safe speed. Let's say you want your vehicle always to be at 40 km per hour on road, so it will do it for you. You, you don't have to worry about uh, braking or accelerating. So this is the machine that we used. Mm. So this is the, uh, there is a leading vehicle and then a following vehicle. Leading vehicle is one which, which is sort of uh, in front of the uh, big machine. So what we are trying to do is we have uh, set some uh, initial safe distance that the big vehicle has to maintain uh, and then uh, even in turns and uh, the curves and all in the roads, it is sort of trying to maintain as much as possible. So no point of time, I mean collision will happen. So that is what this uh, embedded system ensures. So this basically to uh, increase safety and comfort for the driver when he is uh, on the road.
So these are I mean the same video but uh, this sort of a concept called platooning where vehicles move in groups maintaining the same uh, safe distance from each other. So this, this uh, nicely fits in a highway scenario where you, you, you can uh, do this stuff. So basically what we have done is we have used the uh, same robot that the lab in a box that we call for even uh, demonstrating our uh, automotive embedded systems, I mean applications. So in that way this is sort of a multi-purpose uh, robot. So this, this is an another application uh, what we call as automatic merge control system. It is like a scenario where two roads are merging at an intersection point and uh, you, you need to make a decision which, which vehicle should go first and which vehicle should go next. So the vehicles are intelligent enough to decide among themselves depending on some criteria, I mean who, who should be the leader and who should be the follower. So the criteria can be anything, I mean uh, whoever is nearer to the intersection region can go first or the velocity with which they are moving can decide the uh, strategy or even the priority associated with vehicles. Priority in the sense uh, uh, a particular vehicle may be ambulance or a fire engine so that uh, needs to move ahead. So things like that. Uh, so here we had the uh, criteria of whoever is near the merge region should go first. So what we do is uh, we do program these things using uh, real time application interface RTAI which you will be sort of using in the lab session to program these robots. This uh, uh, sensor network application where uh, the larger goal is to uh, find, I mean detect uh, oil slick in uh, sea water and then sort of try to intimate the uh, whoever relevant person uh, saying that there is an oil leakage over here, you try to contain it as soon as possible. So what this video is showing here is uh, a sort of uh, simulation test bed of that. It has got a light source uh, mounted on top of it. Uh, so this robot is sort of trying to scan the whole area for the light intensity and then uh, it will start rotating along the circumference of that uh, light intensity where it uh, dies off. So the idea is uh, when you have a oil leakage, so differentiate between the boundary of uh, water contained oil and then pure water and then make these robots to circulate, I mean to circle among that uh, boundary, along that boundary. So. So this application uh, where uh, it needs image processing support, so this sort of uh, robo soccer thing where this uh, vehicle is supposed to uh, drive this ball towards this goal post. So we have some, um, I don't know why this mouse is not working, uh, we, we, we need to uh, detect the position of the robot and position of the ball and position of the goal post and then dynamically uh, take that ball towards that goal post, so that was the objective in this. So uh, we are trying to I mean do uh, lots of stuff with the same robot or the same platform that uh, we have designed and built in the lab. So that is the basic idea. Uh, we are sort of reducing the cost uh, and also not compromising on the technical uh, abilities that this robot comes with, uh, that is the basic idea. So uh, the problem statement is you have to write a module for Firebird 2, the robot which is shown over here and uh, part A of that uh, assignment is it should be able to follow the white line. We have got some white line steps in our laboratory. So your job is to program the robot so that it follows the white line wherever it is and as soon as the white line is uh, not there it should stop at that moment. And part B is uh, you have to implement the adaptive cruise control the videos which you saw and what Guru explained right now. So I do not think I need to explain anymore on adaptive cruise control. So we will just uh, see, uh, so uh, whichever PC you will be sitting, you are given login password and uh, you have to go through, uh, go to the CEP directory. So we have provided you with a small uh, piece of code that is CEP.c. So, uh, so basically what you, your job is to create multiple tasks, so uh, if you want to uh, read front sensor value or white line value or you have to control the robot, so you need to 
create multiple tasks for all the individual operations and uh, so basically your program will be in three parts one is the initialization part wherein you will create uh, whatever task you want to create you will allocate various resources to each of these tasks <coughs> Uh, the other part is uh, where you will deallocate all the resources, you will stop all the tasks and the third part is you will define all the task functions like uh, the, uh, if you have three tasks then each task should have a function wherein you have to define what activity that particular task has to do. So uh, in uh, uh, sim simple C program we generally start the execution of the program from main function but uh, in the kernel modules it, uh, it has to be done in init module. So so this is the uh, init module. So you, the execution will start from this uh, uh, function. Uh, since uh, there is a, sing a single serial port that is uh, every task is sharing. So you need to define semaphore. So basically it's a mutex uh, wherein multiple tasks they try to access the serial port at the same time. So you need to synchronize between them because every task will send some command and it is expecting some response. So it should not happen that one task has sent a command for a particular sensor and another task gets that data. So that's why we want to uh, protect that particular uh, serial port in the mutex. Then you initialize the task. So like we, we have this, uh, we have provided with the code in which we have created two tasks. One is you, you read the white line data and another task is you read the uh, sensor, front sensor. So this is the front sensor and if you keep some obstacle in front of the robot you can sense the distance in between the two uh, vehicles then you s set the task in periodic mode because we want to sample the data periodically so we set the uh, task in periodic mode then we start the timer so basically this timer will help in scheduling all the tasks so uh, for this uh, so we start the timer then in order to communicate with the uh, robot you need to you, you have to make use of the serial port. So we have to configure the serial port here. So we define that we have to use the common port of this uh, PC and you specify the baud rate, the number of bits, how many stop bits you want. So once this is done then you uh, make the task, uh, then the actual uh, task uh, execution will start from this point onwards. So when you say RT task make periodic. So, uh, so time now is the time at current instant. So from period onwards the task will start scheduling. So as soon as these two tasks are uh, created and in, uh, initiated here, they will start execution. So the first task is a white line task. So this is the white line task. So every task will be an infinite uh, loop. So you have to read uh, some data. So we, uh, you have to read white line data. So we have a function over here. And if you want to print whatever uh, white line data has been read, you have to make use of rt underscore print k function. So in C, we have got a printf statement. So that won't work here. So because this is a kernel, we are going to write a kernel model, not a user program. And this rt task wait period. So we have programmed it for 100 millisecond. So the period here is set to 100 millisecond. So every 100 millisecond you will be reading the white line data as well as the front sensor data. So the RT task wait period, it will, uh, your task will stop here and will execute only after 100 millisecond. Then the second task is, uh, is front sensor task. So we have a function defined for reading the front sensor value. And this is how we read. So first we lock the port because we have to use semaphore in order to access the serial port. So this is a macro basically. So you can go through the macro what lock underscore port one means, what unlock underscore port one means. Then uh, RTI has provided some APIs for uh, communicating uh, through the serial port. So we have RT underscore SP write. So we specify the port number, like we have specified com1 as the port. Then what command you want to give. So the command is get front proxy. And then what is the size of that buffer and so nano to count. So we have specified 5 millisecond as the timeout uh, time. 
So within 5 milliseconds, it has to write the command. After writing the command, you are expecting some response. So you want to read the whatever data the robot is sending via serial port. So there is an API provided which is RT underscore SP read underscore time. So within 5 milliseconds, it has to read the data. If it is unable to read the data, then you will get an error which, which will say it's a timeout. And we have provided some temporary variables for converting whatever raw data you will be getting that will convert into millimeter. So this is just a small program and uh, the cleanup module is a module wherein you will uh, delete the mutex, you will stop using the serial uh, port, you have to stop the timer and you have to delete the task. So this way you ensure that whatever resources has been allocated to the uh, module in the init module, they get deallocated. So uh, now your job is to create, I mean you can create two, three, whatever number of tasks you want as per your uh, convenience. So your job is to, uh, like as specified in part A and part B, so you have to follow the white line. So once you read the white line data, you have to decide whether you have to take left turn or right turn, how to maneuver your vehicle so that it doesn't overshoot the white line. It has to properly follow it. And secondly, uh, part B means you have to see whether there is some obstacle in front of your vehicle and based upon some judgment and finding the velocity in between two vehicles, you have to adapt to the uh, velocity of the front vehicle. So you have to implement uh, these two uh, module, uh, th these two tasks into your into this program. So let us see how to uh, how to compile this program. So we have, we have provided you with a make file. So uh, the file name goes here cp.o. So just give uh, just give make command. So I have written here. Uh, first we have to load the. So uh, as per this uh, document, first you have to load the uh, requ uh, mandatory modules. So those modules are uh, RT underscore HL, which is the hardware abstraction layer. Then you have to insert the scheduler. RT has provided some scheduler, so that you have to insert into. And since you are going to use semaphore, so even that module is required. And for serial communication, you will be uh, using this RT underscore serial dot KO module. So when you have to compile the program, uh, just do make command, and this will generate the kernel object module for you. So this is the file that is generated by make file. So uh, just uh, switch on the robot. So there is a switch over here. And I will keep this robot at certain distance from this obstacle. And the second step is now you have to insert this model into the uh, kernel. So just give make in command and then give make out command. So what make in will do is it will insert the uh, dot ko model that has been generated into the kernel. And now it is periodically sensing the white line data as well as the front sensor data. Now I will remove the uh, data. I, I will remove the KO model and whatever printf statements, were, print k statements were there, whatever data has been, uh, whatever data has gone into the kernel buffer, I have flushed it into a file called A. So this is the distance that it has sensed and it has given 15 centimeters as the answer. So I hope everything is clear. So just three commands, when you modify your code, just uh, compile it using make command. And we have to insert it, just do make in. And we have to re, uh, remove it from the kernel, just do make out command. 